the historic nature of my speakership is not lost on me. I see the ghost of those people who worked here, those black folks who were enslaved here, whose dignity and humanity was discounted right here in this room. We carry their hopes and dreams and their posterity. And I carry it in my heart. I think about all of the people who never got their rights heard by people sitting in this chamber. Thank God the Commonwealth has turned the page. That was the Virginia Democratic delegate Don Scott, who received a standing ovation last week as he was sworn in as the first black speaker of Virginia's House of Delegates. Uh, that historic achievement was a result of Democrats in Virginia outperforming pundit predictions last year and winning control of both chambers of the Virginia General Assembly. Those big wins were a huge defeat for this man, the Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin, who campaigned on right-wing policies aimed at curbing reproductive rights, banning books and limiting public education. The New York Times noted these Virginia races that drew a national attention were a barometer of both Mr. Youngkin's star power and national sentiment heading into the 2024 presidential election. Democrats won big in 2023, and this year they're continuing to campaign on the issues that matter to voters. To mark the 51st anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision, on Tuesday, President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and their spouses will travel to Virginia to remind voters what's at stake for reproductive freedom in 2024. Joining us now is the Virginia Democrat, Don Scott. He is the new speaker of the state's House of Delegates. Uh, speaker Scott, uh, welcome and congratulations. Thank you so much for having me, Ali. It is an honor to be here. Uh, I'm excited about the future for the Commonwealth of Virginia. You have a, a lot of responsibility, some of which you talked about during your uh, your acceptance speech um, that, that talks about history and the history of, of black people in America and in Virginia. But you have a lot of responsibility moving forward because there are a lot of things that Virginia voters who elected Democrats want to be done differently than what's been done uh, prior to, uh, to your success in the last election? Right. I think uh, Virginians voted to come back to the middle, come back to normality, uh, come back to uh, making sure that we protect the freedoms that so many women expect. They expect to have bodily autonomy over their bodies. They expect to make decisions about their own health care regarding reproductive health. And so I think that was a message that was sent to the governor and the Republicans that enough is enough, that they want folks that will respect their decisions, respect their bodies, and, and respect their families in the future. And I think that's what the voters said. I believe Governor Youngkin made a concerted effort to try to normalize restricting freedom. And I think that freedom uh, won the day in Virginia, the freedom to have well, reproductive health care, uh, decisions between your doctor and your family worn out. And I think people made a decision that we did not want to go backwards. The governor ran on some divisive concepts, talking about CRT and DEI and all these other things. And at the end of the day, it didn't work because we sent a message that these things would not stand and people wanted to move in the right direction. And they're also not the things that sort of affect people uh, day in and day out. The Virginia Mercury uh, wrote an article uh, the other day saying 13 things to watch in the 2024 Virginia General Assembly session. It says the upcoming session could also force Youngkin to clarify his brand of purple state conservatism as Democrats use their expended, expanded power to send him a wave of bills on hot button topics like gun control, marijuana sales, minimum wage, abortion and same-sex marriage. One of the first proposals Democrats filed for the upcoming session was legislation to ban future sales of assault-style firearms and prohibit Virginians under 21 from possessing them. Democrats introduced a proposed constitutional amendment that would enshrine abortion rights in the Virginia Constitution. So you're getting away. DEI and CRT for most people are abstractions, right? This is, these, are, these are the matters that, that Virginians said, can you, can you just fix these things for us, please? That's what voters told us. Voters said, get back to solving problems for us. We have issues. We have a, a gun violence issue, not only in Virginia, but across the country. Ban these weapons of war from our streets and from our children's schools. Our children should not be going to school for the first week. I remember the first week of school, we may have done a fire drill. Mm -hmm. Now children are doing active shooter drills. We can do better than this. And Virginians said, enough is enough. 
We will make that. We will ask the governor to put his money where his mouth is when he says that he believes in freedom for all Virginians. We're going to protect women's reproductive health care, and we're hoping that the governor will look at the minimum wage, fifteen dollars an hour. Most members of the chamber of commerce can't get help for fifteen dollars an hour, but that's a living wage that we're asking the governor to sign, and we're going to send that bill to his desk as soon as we can. What's your sense of how that is all going to go down? Do you think the governor is going to read the tea leaves and say I should do this, or is he going to say? Not going to do this, and he's going to he's going to send a whole bunch of your bills you know, back. I, you know, the the governor. I've had the opportunity to speak to him a few, few times. I think he's a pragmatist. I think he's not an uh, ideologue, even though he has to run that way sometimes, one on one. I think he's a pragmatist, and I think he wants to get things done. I think if we put some things together, uh, put a package in front of him that is reasonable, that he will sign it. We do not have the power to overturn his veto. So the only way that we get things done is to get things done together. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that we can put some of these common sense items in front of the governor and that he'll sign them. We will watch this very closely, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. It's an honor to have you on the show tonight. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. The Virginia House of Delegates Speaker, Don Scott.